Hey everyone, we've got some super exclusive content on the Joby Aviation S4. Today at the Dubai Air Show, we got to witness one of the first public flights, including hover, transition forward flight, cruise flight, and we got to interview Didier Papadopoulos, who is the CEO of Aircraft OEM at Joby, and we got up close and personal with the mock-up, explaining all of the cool aerodynamic features on this aircraft. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, we're here at the Dubai Air Show, and maybe soon in the future, you'll be flying your car to work. What do you think? Well, in first instance, it's going to be via VertiPorts and so on. And this is the Joby um, aircraft, one of the first to probably hit the market and provide real flights. So, as you can see, these are tilt rotors. So this means that to take off and land, this mechanism will actually make sure that the propeller is pointed upwards um, to provide vertical thrust to take off. And then once you're actually hovering in the skies, these will slowly tilt forward, which means you get forward thrust and you start to actually get forward velocity which means as soon as you have enough forward velocity these wings will start to generate enough lift for you to stay in the air and once the transition is complete you'll be just flying like a normal aircraft uh, with all of these props tilted completely forward. Um, now if we continue to the rest of the aircraft we can see that we have uh, of course very complex systems which is very interesting you've got cooling there um, you have the wingtips on the rotor blades uh, to reduce the noise because the noise is going to be crucial if you want to fly these airplanes in an urban environment and get it accepted by the uh, population right um, then if you continue you can see that you have uh, control surfaces uh, just like on a normal aircraft uh, you can actually uh, tilt these upward downwards to generate upward lower uh, and downward force to actually control your aircraft uh, same thing at the tail. Um, so a very good, cool V-tail on this aircraft, um, which of course also has the control surfaces uh, to give it more uh, authority in the skies. Um, if we then walk around um, the aircraft, you can see that the wing nicely blends with the rest of the airframe here, which is really nice. Uh, so it's been streamlined a lot. Even the landing gear has been optimized, uh, which is typically a point of uh, aerodynamic drag on aircraft. And then it seats actually um, four people inside plus the pilot. So if you wanna have a look inside, this is actually what the cockpit looks like. And this is actually really, really cozy. So if you see, there's lots of room. Um, it kind of feels like a very premium sports car. And if you look over there, that's where the cockpit is. Uh, so that's where the pilot will be flying. Um, there's all these nice little details like the lighting inside. It's very clean, very lightweight, both visually and physically, because of course, these things are battery powered, which means that you want to save as much weight as you can, because every kilogram you save in terms of weight is an extra passenger that you can maybe carry in the future um, and that's it for the Joby uh, so later on we'll be looking at the demo here uh, live at the air show we're gonna have some footage of that as well so stay tuned it's supposed to be really quiet and I think we're just getting more noise from the turbines uh, on the plane which are just stationary then we're gonna hear from the Joby so let's check it out I, I can hardly hear it <laughs> that's insane It's just a very, very quiet hum as it passes by, that's it, it's insane. Of course, during cruise flight, the propellers are not loaded as heavily as during takeoff and landing, so I hope we're going to be able to check that out as well. This is super cool, it's actually going to go into hover now, this is the transition. Look at this, right above us, this is super cool. This is way faster than what we saw in previous videos in terms of transition time. So now it's just hovering and dancing in the sky. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's off again. That's insane. So we just saw a transition from cruise flight to hover back to cruise flight right in front of us at the Dubai Air Show. Hey Didier, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's been brilliant because we saw the plane fly, which was extremely cool to see and not to hear because I didn't hear anything, right? That was impressive. So I have a list of questions. It's four pages. I will not go through all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the main ones are about the technical concept. So it's an electric aircraft. What benefits does that bring? 
Yeah, the electric aircraft has a lot of benefits to it, and it's not only electric aircraft. You gotta wait for that loud, loud one to come through. But um, it's also distributed electric propulsion, and it brings a lot of benefits to it. First and foremost, obviously, it's clean aviation, right? Uh, we, we are environmentally friendly in the way we're moving people from point A to point B, and that's a, a really important part of, of the mission that uh, we've uh, set on to deliver on. But also another uh, part of that is the technology of electric propulsion uh, with the electric batteries is also one of the key enablers in us delivering on a quiet uh, mission. So when the aircraft flies, just like you saw it earlier today, we were able to have a candid conversation like this without screaming and without the loud noise. And that's a very important part for us because in order to be able to deliver those missions in some of the crowded cities, we want to make sure that we're conscious of the environment we, we're within it within, and make sure that we don't introduce uh, you know, uh, noise or other uh, points of dissatisfaction for the residents. Yeah, one of the key element one of the key elements of the noise is the design of the propeller, um, and also the propeller design is quite interesting because you have a tilt rotor setup, which means they provide both the vertical thrust and the horizontal thrust, which are two very different operating points for a propeller. Um, one is without inflow, another one is with a lot of inflow of air. How did you balance the performance of the propeller? Yeah, a lot of interesting things, and, and so maybe just to recap for a second, yes, the aircraft uh, takes off vertically just like a helicopter then it goes through a transition phase and then eventually uh, moves on to start flying like a fixed wing aircraft. And that's really important for us because that's what enables you to take off and land from some of the tightest locations where really passengers want to be picked up from. But it also allows you to transition quickly to a fixed wing aircraft where you have the most efficient and most effective uh, sort of uh, means of transportation in, from an aero standpoint and from energy consumption standpoint. That's the unique things, of, uh, one of the unique things about eVTOL. The other thing that's really important for us, as, as you said, the propeller blades were designed in order to optimize through all of that uh, cycle. Um, and also enables us to be able to uh, fly in, in regimes where we are producing uh, high lift, uh, but at the same time uh, minimizing on the acoustics level. So when we're spinning these uh, propeller blades, they are moving at much slower uh, speeds than what you might see in a helicopter, for example. But those motors are providing instantaneous high torque torque and that's what enables us to be able to perform throughout all these missions and you saw some amazing demonstrations of these things today. Yeah exactly and, and you're, you're almost there right you're going through the last phases of certification to start operating and transporting passengers and so on. Um, safety is a huge concern obviously with new technology. Um, you've got six tilt rotors. Uh, what happens if one of them blocks or stops or how do you cover this? Uh, if one of the propeller blades, for example, uh, one of the propeller systems were to fail or one of the actuators were to fail in the tilt mechanism, so to speak, we're able to continue to fly the aircraft uh, normally without uh, jeopardizing uh, the, the flight, so to speak. And we were able to demonstrate that. You can actually go and check us out on uh, YouTube and other places and you'll see flights where we turned off a propulsion system and I were able to continue uh, throughout the mission. Discussions with pilots, looking at telemetry nothing literally changed in the aircraft. You could barely notice that that was happening. And that goes to back to the design we have, which it has built-in redundancies in it. Yeah, and, and so currently it's an electric aircraft um, carrying four passengers, one pilot. What's the future in terms of capacity, battery technology, hybrid solutions? Yeah, so I think one thing that's important to think about is that what we're doing now is sort of the baseline. It's the basis of a lot of technologies that had to come together in order to deliver on this first aircraft. But from here on, we can expand and uh, sort of evolve this baseline into uh, different uh, versions, so to speak, that can deliver on uh, additional missions, whether it be longer range missions, higher payload missions, and so on. One of the great examples of that is we recently announced a partnership where we're developing a hybrid propulsion aircraft. Mm -hmm. And that aircraft um, is hybrid electric, uh, but because of the uh, turbine in it, we were able to extend the range of those missions. So you can have the same airframe, you can have the same propulsion system, all the great things we talked about, but be able to deliver on longer missions. Alternative means could be, for example, higher payloads, uh, particularly if you think about the autonomy system. Uh, Joby has been developing autonomy uh, over multiple years now with a system called uh, Superpilot. 
And we've been able to demonstrate that in operation in a lot of places back in the U.S. Now, if you bring in autonomy, suddenly that passenger seat can be uh, turned into, uh, sorry, uh, that pilot seat can suddenly be turned into a passenger seat. And now you've moved from four passengers to five passengers in that same aircraft. So you could see those technologies building on that baseline again and delivering on multiple uh, missions with that same aircraft. Yeah, because that's going to be key, right, to bring down the cost per flight, per mile, and so on. Um, when you launch, what do we have to take into account or keep in mind in terms of cost? If you would take a Joby instead of a regular Uber from city center to airport. Yeah, so one of the things that's really important for us is that it's important that the solution and the vision for us is that for a Joby mission to be something accessible to a large mass of people, right? We don't want this to be a very unique, very niche type of application. When we launch, launch at, the, at, at the beginning, we will test that in various markets and uh, sort of grow from there in order to be able to deliver on most of these missions. A typical example that I've heard uh, said often on, on some, some of the price targets is like an Uber black, so to speak. Yeah. And that varies from one market to another. But that gives you a sense of sort of what it might look like at the very beginning. And when you say you want to increase the volume, the number of people taking the service to make it really accessible, um, what are the limits in terms of times between takeoff and landing of different aircraft? Um, the transition also requires virtual space in the air. How many planes can take off within an hour, for example, from one vertical port? We want to be able to deliver from mission A to B and then B to A with very quick turn time. So when you deplane passengers, when new passengers get on board, there is just enough time for us to recharge our aircraft and get it going. So we need that high high tempo, and that high tempo is going to be what's enabling uh, sort of the broader utilization. Okay. And like, like every space is different. You said four spaces to begin with, or locations. Um, the wind at takeoff and so on, the environmental wind, the wind around buildings, skyscrapers and so on. How do you tackle safety and sensitivity of the aircraft when you have like uh, gusts and so on? Yeah, so that was all part of the flight test development program that we have been working on for multiple yeah. years. So just as a recap, we've been flying multiple aircraft for many years now. And uh, yeah. in fact, this year alone, I think we've accumulated more than 600 and 650 flights. So we're flying most days on a regular basis. And part of these flights is assessing the full envelope of the aircraft, including with wind gusts and wind conditions, directions, and so on. And we're really excited because we've been able to demonstrate that. We know what the conditions are within which we can operate, and we can match these to the cities we're going after and know that it's a perfect fit from that standpoint. Yeah, and coming back to the user experience, to make the best use of the time savings that you offer, um, everything before and after the experience also needs to be seamless, like, like getting from your car into the aircraft, uh, into your uh, proper flight to another country, for example, um, how do you cut down those times? We have a partnership with Uber where that experience is going to automatically pick you up uh, with an Uber ride. Uh, once you get to an airport, uh, then we also automatically connect you with uh, the airline you're traveling with. That's why we value uh, partnerships like the partnership we have with Delta Airline or uh, ANA in Japan, for example. Those are sort of some of the key ways we're using to connect you from the very, very beginning of where you are to exactly where you want to be. We had the fortune to visit uh, NASA in the States uh, at Ames, where they were, uh, and also in the Mojave Desert, where they worked on the X-57 electric aircraft. Um, that was really interesting to see all kinds of concepts. It's probably going to converge to one, two, three main concepts. What's your relationship to the government, to research institutes, and, and so on? Is it all in-house, or do you have collaborations? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're highly vertically integrated. Just as a reminder, we do uh, the design, the manufacturing, and the testing for most of of this aircraft in-house, but we do do it also with uh, key stakeholders like NASA. We have had multiple studies with NASA uh, when it comes to acoustics, for example, and I think that's important not only because uh, we bring in uh, outside expertise, but we also have some level of uh, independent assessment, so to speak, right, uh, that is really important. We also um, did some studies relating to downwash also with, with NASA FAA and so on, so that we can also get an assessment on how we can uh, properly integrate with the airspace. We are doing also 
uh, some studies with them in, in uh, wind tunnel uh, efforts in order to assess the efficiency and the loads on our propulsion system and so on. When is the first person going to take a normal paid flight via their phone? I, the, the hope is very soon. Our uh, target is to start uh, early operations, so to speak, uh, next year. Um, whether it's paid or not, that's a different story, but we're working really hard and focusing on delivering. Uh, my hope is all of you guys are able to fly this aircraft anytime soon. So that was it for our video on the Joby Aviation S4. I hope you liked it. If you did, drop a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.